Hi there, my name's Christian Henson from Spitfire Audio. And since co-founding Spitfire Audio about 14 years ago, we've always maintained that the primary objective of Spitfire, other than inspiring a generation of composers, is to connect composers with musicians. By buying a Spitfire product, you're paying into a royalty pool that gets distributed to about 600 plus musicians twice yearly. But also, it enables people certainly like myself who are, are not theoretically trained to be able to work out what I want musicians to play. Our end goal is always that orchestra at somewhere like Air Studios. And something I've always done in the films I make for Spitfire and indeed on my own personal vlog is say certainly when you're working on a professional project there is rarely an excuse not to use at least one musician because what they do is elevate our music. Now, now, I'm going to talk about Albion Solstice today. Uh, the Albion range is, is kind of made for a composer like me, wanting to be able to really hear what the musicians will do, create stereo masters when we can't afford live orchestras, and certainly demonstrate to clients what they will sound like if we can. Albion Solstice is what we refer to as a folk noir library. We've taken folk instruments and have presented them in a cinematic form, if you will. And a lot of you have said, why aren't there any soloists? Well, particularly with folk, I say, well, why don't you just get a soloist to play on your music, whether that be a shakuhachi or indeed a violin, as we will do today. There's never been a time more perilous for musicians and the music-making community. Uh, the inability to tour over the last 18 months and the problems that British musicians face in Europe at the moment means that they are really struggling. So really there is no excuse. And because of these last very difficult 15 to 18 months, there is a kind of a silver lining for us composers. And that is many musicians have now created facilities at their own homes in sheds like this in in order to be able to provide remote sessions. And I'll be providing details of how to find lists of such musicians in the video description down below. So what I thought I'd do today is get one of my great friends and a great talent to play on a track that I've made for you, a contextual track, to see how I work remotely with musicians. Anna Phoebe is a, a, a rare talent, a fantastic solo violinist. She also plays six string electric, has worked with all and sundry, but is also a really exciting up-and-coming composer in her own right. I've worked with her for many years and I had a chance a few days ago to have a chat with her about remote sessions and how she goes about working on them. Before we go to that bit of footage, I just want to take you through what I prepared for Anna. Right, just have to warn you that the backing track is, is just raw bones me sketching around. It hasn't been finessed whatsoever. It's what kind of jumps out of solstice if you're just kind of vamping away. The idea is for Anna to go on top of the track and just like you would like with a lead vocalist, I then like kind of producing around the central performance. So we're going to start with folky Celtic here. So let's hear her. This is what I've given her to her to follow, so a very neutral sound. And this is what she's playing against. Folky flowers. And then I want her to blend with the section. She's going to help these transitions for me. I'm not using legatos at this point. It's a bit of crossing there. And then some tremolandis.
So starting as part of the section, and then I want her to speak more out like she's the leader as she goes down an octave. As I mentioned before, it's just a very kind of it's a it's a, a blocked sketch of what I want Anna to play against. And kind of like when you do a track with a, a lead vocalist, you then produce around them. So I didn't want her to have just a complete track to play against. I wanted to use her as a collaborative element from which I would grow the track. So package that all up, PDF, MIDI file a couple of audio files and a logic file, just in case she does use logic, I think she does. And here's me a few days ago talking to Anna about the process. Anna, how are you doing? Hi, Christian. Good. How are you? I always like it when I knock on your front door and go, can you come out to play? <laughs> and you say yes. We've done loads of sessions together, but together, together. We've never done a remote one, but this is more commonplace for you these days, isn't it? Those sessions in Rupert Street in Soho back in the day, that, that definitely was like the starting out period. And I think it's it's incredible to see that this is where we've got to. You know, we're totally almost in two separate countries, definitely two separate parts of the country. Yeah. And recording here remotely, sending stuff off to you and other people, yeah. And, and you do uh, remote collaborations with lots of people, don't you? Yeah, I've done... So the last session I did was... I've done one for Knitting a couple of days ago. Jules Holland, I've recorded for his album, Remote as well as in the studio with him. And the biggest collaboration that I've done remotely was done pretty much a whole album with Ashling Brower from my from my band Ava Waves. We had one writing session and the rest of it literally was sending stuff to and fro and kind of um, doing the whole album that way. So yeah, it's been a lot of remote recording. Wow. And producing. Yeah. Now, I know for a lot of people, it, it, you know, particularly people who, who like me aren't necessarily theoretically skilled, it can be quite scary to work with musicians. Musicians definitely aren't scary. And I think also, you know, after a year of, of, you know, people not being able to get into the studio and record in such a more traditional way in studio, so many people have set up remote recording set mm -hmm. up and they're really good. And it's just about knowing what to ask the musician and them knowing how to send files back to the to the composer. And I think Nanita Desai has set up a really good directory of loads of musicians across every genre who are able to remote um, do remote recording. So I think people are keen to do it, definitely. Linked in the video description down below, I may hasten to add. So Anna, what would you recommend uh, if, say, for example, let, let's just start from a very basic kind of model of someone who really, really doesn't know anything about writing music or scoring can't follow a score what would you recommend they do the most important thing or the most helpful thing is probably definitely when you're writing not just write on keyboard i mean if you're comfortable writing with a piano sound out of the box that's fine but then definitely separate it into you know even if it's the logic um the logic fake or um uh, instruments because if you've got no idea about range of an instrument you know suddenly you'll put you'll put music in it it will be out of range so i think that's just really this the, the, the basic thing i think not to be not to be scared of asking the musician finding a musician who plays that instrument um, I've done sessions for people where it's really 
been unplayable and a lot of musicians are also um, nervous about doing the right thing and playing well so sometimes and definitely in the past when I've been sort of less confident and the first times I've done remote sessions you get something you think shit you've practiced it for ages and you think do you know what I can't I can't do it and then you find out the person who's written has never written for the violin they might have done it out the box on a piccolo or something yeah. and you think actually actually it's great to get a dialogue going with a composer and if you're a composer or producer find musicians I think most people People want to work together. Everyone's got a common goal. They want, you know, to sound good and their piece to sound good and their playing to sound good. So I think just um, having the confidence to reach out to musicians and talk to them about, um, you know, about playing style, about playing capability and phrasing as well. Sometimes phrasing or bowing. I think it can be much more collaborative and it probably has to be in a remote session because in the studio you can hear something and go actually can we try it like this can we try you don't have that really mm -hmm. in, in a remote session so it's good to have that dialogue before the musician sits down and and sort of just starts recording for you so i think it'd be good to go into what i've sent you you just sent you just now which is yeah, basically uh, uh, i've i've covered all bases i had a feeling <laughs> you used logic but wasn't sure so what i've done is i've sent you a logic file um, with two audio files, basically what I want you to play and what I want you to play against. And then I've also sent you a PDF with a very scrappy score uh, for yeah. you to, to look at. And, you know, there is a little bit of theoretical knowledge in there, but also I'm just kind of speaking to you in quite... Uh, let me just shrink that down. I, I think that's another that's another thing with sheet music as well. You know, if you're in Logic, getting someone to, you know, if you've got Sibelius and you know how to use it, fantastic. If you've got someone who can help you with it, fantastic. But also, I think after the year that we've had, and also when you work in film, even, you know, working with Martin Phipps, he doesn't prepare these kind of, incredible scores for me he's literally you know he's writing parts because things are moving quickly he doesn't have time to get someone to to make a you know some sheet music he uh, he literally is pulling up what what you've sent me you know a pdf of the you know the piano part played in so it's not not to be also frightened by the fact that you've got to send sheet music it can just be the midi kind of as a thing well i think if we look here what what i'll often do is i, I won't even be this De detailed um, uh, but I have put some kind of dynamic suggestions I haven't done any phrasing whatsoever and I'm using phrases like folky Celtic <laughs> again based on our relationship and me knowing that you'll know what that means from kind of bar 21 I've said blend with section so what I thought would be good for us to experiment with here is is the impact you have as a soloist I think that is particularly vital you know there's a sampled solo violin never sounds no. anywhere near as good as the real deal, particularly in these kind of folk senses where it's it's all about the, the way that you express yourself. But yeah. I think what is also really good is 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 blending a, just a solo violin in with an, an orchestral section sample can really make that kind of spring to life. Definitely. So what I thought we'd do is do a mixture of both. So we start with folky, then we go to blend with section saltasto, then back to folk star um, and then we I'm saying as part of the section and then more as section leader starting to play as out as a classical soloist and then I just uh, in bar 75 say bring it <laughs> which I know <laughs> that's, that, that's like, a typical Christian I know exactly what you mean <laughs> <laughs> I think you can be secular in the way that you um, write notes I think that I'm being a little bit colloquial with you again based on our relationship and you know what I mean by bring it and I guess what I've experienced from remote sessions is is um, the players just tend to give me a few options yeah you kind of you kind of want to experiment with the phrasing maybe with the bowing and also especially when you're bedding in um, I tend to sort of move around the mic a little bit um, and play in a different style and also for for bedding in with samples if there's little kind of um discrepancies and tuning um i leave those in but in the solo i might give options and then highlight in red like the points that i think are a little bit iffy and then i leave it to the discretion of whoever's composing because also you have to remember when you're doing session work you're not you're kind of acting as the engineer but actually that's not your role your role is to lay down the parts and then send them off i'll probably give you probably like four options yeah. does that does that sound about absolutely. right absolutely is that 
Okay. Yeah, and what I would suggest is a is a conservative right to all the way to seriously fruity. Yeah, and that then sounds, that sounds great. Yeah, and I think it's important to say that you know, uh, and this is very common practice is you'll give me four options and I'll maybe comp between the four and that's perfectly uh, yeah. okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. Well, good luck with it, <laughs> and I look forward to hearing it back from you. All right, look forward to see seeing you later. You. Bye. Bye. So, I've got a piece of sheet music. Anna's contextual. I'm just having a look, quick look. And yeah, starting to play out classical soloist. <laughs> From that to bring it back to folky, more as section leader, double stop. So yeah, he's. I think, Christian, you've given me a full range of kind of ideas. I think I'm going to start off with this violin, which is my main sort of classical violin. And then I've got a couple of others I might do for the blending in as part of a section. I don't know. Or maybe I'll stick on this. I don't know. So I'm going to do a first take. I haven't played through it yet, but I always think you never know what's going to happen with the first take so I just want to make sure I record it just in case and if it's shit or I make mistakes you'll hopefully edit those out okay so that was take four three so if I'm playing like a classical soloist like he says I've tried not to do slides Maybe I should just actually pull up and not try and do the jump. Better, but I think it's safer if I... I mean, it's just a scale. I really should be able to play this. <laughs> the pressure of being filmed. Okay, here we go. This is it. 56, 57, 58, 2, 3. Okay, so I finished recording um, all the violins and I've just been listening to it and I really think I want to add a tiny bit of viola. He's not asked for it, but um, a little bit on that low C just to blend in with the fake strings. I think that could be really cool. So here's what I got back. And it's, it's like getting a cake in the post. It's always so exciting to hear how a musician has interpreted your work. And as I say, there's never, ever been a time where I haven't used a musician and they haven't elevated the music. And here we are. So you see how generous she's been. Just loads of stuff to choose from there. So we've got our solo takes up here. I love the tone. Once we get this all blended in with the uh, band, it's going to sound absolutely wonderful. But the thing I'm going to go to straight away are her personality takes, because this is what it's all about. It's about capturing the personality of the player. Yeah, she goes into pomp there.
Now, she mentioned that often if there's a little bit of a squiggly boob, she'll mark it in red. So let's have a listen to that of like, this may be going a little bit too far. So she's caught a kind of a, a ponty note there. So that might be a little bit too strong. I might replace that with one of the alternatives up here. And also wildcard texture, what's this? Brilliant stuff. So what I do is I just import all of this into the main Logic session and then create what I call a comp or a compilation of my favourite bits. So here's Anna's stuff here. Now, if I unhide, you can see that they're, they're all in there and I've created a comp from a variety of the different regions that she's sent me. Now, you'll see I've got two tracks here, one solo, um, which has a delay on it and just a tiny little bit of just to help her bed in just a little bit with the sounds and we've also got some reverb uh, sh that she's sharing with the rest of the band and then I've got an Anna section track which you'll see is slightly panned to the left and doesn't have the delay this part is me trying to make her sound sh like she's in with the band and you'll notice it's just a little bit of automation but you'll notice that this is a little bit quieter. And it's really, for me, the secret to using musicians to enliven your sections is to use them like almost like an icing layer on the top of your music cake. Just the very, very surface, not speaking out too loudly because you get this separation of, hang on, is that player in the same room as the rest of the band? So if we solo the rest of the strings here, lovely lush reverb there which is from a TC6000. Although I've got two tracks here you'll notice they're checkerboarded so we've got the solo part here that comes at the beginning and at the end and then the middle section here. I haven't used multi-tracks of Anna i.e. overdubbing her on top of herself. That is because the Musicians Union in this country doesn't allow it or rather it does allow it but you have to pay for Anna again every time you double track her. Now some musicians are kind of okay if you do this, but for me it's a respect issue, it's an exploitation issue. I follow the, the letter of the Musicians Union law because Musicians Union looks after musicians, and I really appreciate when musicians are incredibly generous and say, it doesn't matter, you can double track me, etc., etc. If I wanted to double track Anna, maybe we would come to a personal arrangement whereby instead of counting the number of tracks, I'd Pray, pay her a kind of a large premium um, uh, fee for her work because I'm ostensibly putting a string section out of work. So it would be to cover that, if you know what I mean. But I think that's the key thing whenever working with musicians is a sense of mutual respect. And I'll only use Anna on this track. If I want to use this recording on something else, I'll reach out to her and say, listen, I need to pay you another fee because I've had a commission and it's gone on to that. It's been used for something entirely different. Conversely, to turning them into samples or anything like that. I'd call her up and say, listen, it's okay if I convert those into samples, charge me a sampling fee for the same session. When speaking earlier about there's rarely an excuse not to work with at least one musician, they are so affordable. There's always room to involve a live musician, in my humble opinion. Okay, so let's walk you through the various different instruments I've used and how we've blended them together. I'm going for just a very standard cinematic sound, so I'm not hyper-producing this. Uh, you'll see that there's very few EQs and stuff like that. So I've got a pad part of recorded using expression and modulation here. And it's a, it's a multi of longs from the classic octet and the solo bass. 
this is enhanced by some... I wanted to go for a big sound here, and that's not necessarily what Albion Solstice is designed to do, to give you kind of epic strings, but I just thought it'd be interesting to try giving ourselves a, a broad kind of sound that sounds different, that has these traditional players recorded in Castle Sound Studios. So this is Consordino and Solpont in the bass. This brings more, dare I say it, sibilance to the proceedings. Then we have some legatos here. There's two kinds of legatos. There's I always forget, is it fingered or bowed? The, the legatos that have a separation between a note and then a kind of folky slide, which you access by pressing very gently. So then we've got some consordinos again, but an octave higher. Shameless stacking of voices here. Sultasto. Just brings a little bit of mystery to it. So we've got a drone here of these amazing circular. Now you'll notice I'm using two reverbs, the reverb that comes with Albion Solstice and an external reverb, the TC6000. This is Jake Jackson's technique. The reverb that comes in contact puts them in a room. The reverb that you add blends the whole thing together, together and gives you that kind of Hollywood sound. Then got these amazing loose pizzicato. Oh, love it. Joined by some colenio. And then we've got some more legato playing the top line. Harmonics right at the end, really to brighten stuff up. Insane sound. Uh, this legato bit I really enjoy. You'll see that I've automated it up there, but this is a counterpoint melody to Anna. Got some little artisan notes here. Beautiful. And some more of those towards the end. And then I thought, we haven't done many demos with the various different staccatos and spiccatos. So we've got the... It's a really unique sound there. And because it's such a small band, just eight players, you can really hear the different players and you get this great kind of panning effect. Uh, these are also really useful, the Tremolandi measured. Moving on to the Marauders playing glorious loops. And you see, I use these the same as I do the orchestral stuff, using expression and modulation. Lots of lovely reverb on that. And then I've got this snake kit, which I've tuned down five cents. Give it a deep kind of sound. And there's these amazing high percussive notes. Some nursery coupled with some plucked harmonics, I believe, from the blackguards. And then some spiccatos with the blackguards, which are a combination of accordions, harmoniums, class acts, uh, nickel harpers, you name it. They're kind of the beating heart of solstice. We've got the blackguards again playing drones here. 
amazing hurdy-gurdies there. I've got a sine wave going underneath the whole band. an octave beneath the bass to give it again that kind of modern hybrid sound. Callers, woodwinds, playing some more staccatos. It's more kind of woodwindy, fluty up there. And I've got some kind of Jerry Goldsmithy accented notes here. A bit of delay on those to give you the full Jerry experience. And then some, some legatos with the same band, down low. In fact, we've got here a nice contrapuntal melodic line here. And we've got the whistles here in the Mystics playing this incredible legato that's so quick. And some fun with, again, some more contrapuntal lines here, some just little phrases here. Again, with a bit of delay on, some mandolins. And last but not least, I've put a little bit of mastering on, which is my standard kind of mastering, chop the bottom off, boost a little bit of the top. It's quite a lot of strings being stacked up here. So it can get, just starts to build up around the 2K mark, which is not my favorite part of the frequency spectrum. So a bit of compression there, just tickling it and louderizer there. In conclusion, musicians are out there to collaborate with us and elevate our music. They really do, someone said, samples can make the hairs on, the, on your arms go up, back of your neck but musicians will make you cry and they really will bring that something extra special. And particularly if you do use commercial samples, the only guarantee you have of a totally unique sound will be a unique recording with a musician. And in this era of remote recording, you don't have to have the means or know-how or facility to record them. You're not having to worry about studio hires, et cetera, et cetera. There's never been a greater time to work with live musicians. And all I can say is it's all just about communicating. Even if you just send them some MIDI and some audio and a little list of notes of at bar 25, can it sound a bit spangly? They'll work with you to get you what you want. And the remote situation I found, they'll often give you more than you need. There's more generosity because of the you know, slight challenges of, of working remotely, having to cover a few bases for you, interpret what you're doing. As I said, it's about mutual respect and not taking the piss. Musicians do need to be paid and they should be paid if you're building up and double tracking and all of that kind of stuff. And certainly if you then use their recordings on other recordings. It's really, really important that we value the musicians. If we don't, no one will and we know what they bring to our music. There's loads of details in the video description down below. Nainita Desai's amazing list of musicians who do work remotely and details about Anna Phoebe and how you can find her music. Thanks so much, Anna. Could we have a thumbs up for Anna? It's just such a pleasure to work with you and I hope to see you in person very soon. I know that we're totally at opposite ends of the country and it's fantastic that remote recording enables us to come together, albeit virtually. Thanks ever so much for watching till the end. Do check out the video description down below for more information about Albion Solstice and I'll see you very soon. Do subscribe and ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time we put a video up. Thanks very much.